name is Jane from Pandemonium Art Gallery on Historic 25th Street in downtown Ogden, Utah. And today I'm gonna to teach you how to paint this awesome abstract painting. This is a really fun painting for anybody who has never painted before, clear enough to the professional painter. Um, it's a really fun thing to experiment with and you know, make your own and um, just give your own personal touches too. I did this on a 12 by 24 inch canvas, but you can use any size of canvas you want. And I used Liquitex Basics acrylic paints, um, two paintbrushes, any type of paintbrushes you like, um, and then your own imagination. So we are gonna paint this in about 20 minutes, and that's all it really takes. It's very, very quick painting. So let's get started. Okay, the first thing we want to do to prepare our canvas is lay down a color that we're okay with showing through the black and white um, image that we're going to paint. So you can certainly leave the background just plain white if you like, but I like to put down a color to let that shine through. It gives it a little bit more of a mood, um, a little bit more depth, and something something to make it seem a little bit more substantial. Um, you can use any colors that you want. You don't have to apply them in any certain way. In fact, you should put very little attention into how you apply these colors because the vast majority of it is going to be covered up. You're only gonna get the slightest hint of the colors. So I've chosen cadmium orange medium, primary red, which is more of a kind of a deep pink, and primary yellow. So I'm just gonna scrub them into my canvas. I'm not worried about getting an even um, texture. I'm not worried about the colors blending in or transitioning from one to the next. I'm not even worried about completely covering this canvas. All I'm interested in is getting these colors on there. So I'm gonna be using this uh, it's a natural hair bristle brush. Um, it's, it's very stiff. Um, Kind of reminds me of like horsehair or straw or something and usually I use my brushes wet but for this background I'm going to use this brush dry and that's simply because I found that when this brush is wet and you scrub it actually will scrape a lot of the paint off and I don't want that so but if I use it dry it doesn't do that as much so I'm just gonna randomly grab some colors and just start Scrubbing it in. Every time I get more paint, I'm just going to grab a different color. And I'm just working in. I really like this technique because, you know, sometimes, sometimes you get into a place where you feel like everything you paint is turning out wrong. Um, it happens to me a lot where I'm just not happy with anything I paint or I can't think of anything to paint. And sometimes all you need to get out of that is just a little bit of success. And so if you paint something like this where there's no right, there's no wrong, you can't mess up, then that gives you that little taste of success and it's easier to move on from there and, and paint something else. So I'm just going to keep scrubbing these colors in until my whole canvas is covered. I know that the tendency for a lot of people is going to be to layer these colors in interesting ways or um, blend them perfectly or make fun shapes out of them, but you're not gonna see any of that. So I, I would discourage you from doing that, but, and you can do that, maybe that will be what you need to, to get out of your art funk. But this is a really fun um, painting for anybody to do who's maybe never painted before, you know? If you've never painted before and you just start throwing these colors down and it might give you some ideas for something else, but at the least, what it's gonna do is give you some experience with the brush. So you know what these colors do when they touch. You know how the paint 
um, moves and how it spreads on the canvas. You learn about your workability time of the colors. You learn how much paint to use, how far certain amounts of paint are going to go on the canvas. Drawing times, I mean, just, if you're just new to painting and don't know where to begin, begin by just grabbing some colors and smearing it on the canvas. You learn so much from that. Even if it's just a big black blob of a canvas afterwards, you know, the, the things that you learn are valuable and you can take those on to other paintings in the future. You know, um, that's really how I started painting, was just scribbling random colors onto a canvas. And then after you've done that a little bit, all of a sudden, you remember, hey, this last time when I scribbled these two colors into the canvas, I got this color. And I really like that color. I'm going to aim for that again. And so you start to develop these, these skills and these little bits of knowledge. So there's my background. Um, if you're to look close, you can see my brush strokes. There's spots of the white canvas showing through, and I'm totally okay with all of that. Because like I said, the vast majority of it is not going to even show, but enough of it will to just give it that depth. So we're gonna let this dry, and then we'll come back and we will paint. We'll start painting our abstract image. Okay, so now our background is dry and we're gonna start layering our black and white. And we're gonna start actually with Mars Black. I'm using, it's a, it's a fairly stiff brush and about three quarters of an inch, but any brush that you're comfortable with, you can use. Um, you'll get a different style of line with all different kinds of brushes. This is the one that I prefer. So I'm gonna load up with black, and when I say load up, I mean really load up. So I'm kind of smashing it in there to absorb a bunch of the paint into the brush. But then I'm also going to kind of get it blobbed onto the end. You see how much paint is on there? There's a ton of paint on there. Now when I'm putting the paint on here, I'm going to be thinking about the rule of thirds. And the rule of thirds in painting is, it, it kind of talks about composition. So how you want to put the points of interest on the canvas. So I don't necessarily want to put a, you know, a line straight down the center, straight down the center. Um, I want to make it a little bit more dynamic so that the eye kind of moves around. So my main lines are gonna break the canvas into thirds or you know, one third and two thirds. And that's gonna be in the forefront of my mind throughout the whole thing. But I'm also gonna just really free flow it. Wherever I feel like a line should go um, is where I'll put one. So you can keep doing this until you like what you have and just keep messing with it. So I'm going to start right about here and I'm laying this paint on really thick. If it's thin, it's going to dry really fast and I want it to stay wet so that when I start putting the white on there, the black is still wet and will smear into it. So I always keep tons of paint on my brush. And I don't want that line to go all the way across. And you can do, you can do curves. You can do any kind of shapes you want. And notice I'm not worried about these lines being straight or anything because I'm going to paint over a bit of it. Probably not, I mean obviously not all of it, but I'm going to paint over quite a bit of it. Which is why I want it thick. So that the white takes on some of that black and gives some, some interesting shading and movement in the colors. And now I've used all of my black. And again, lots and lots of paint, really thick, heavy paint. Kind of stand back and look at it and decide 
there's any other areas that I feel like it needs some movement or a line breaking it up. Keep adding them until you're happy, and then we'll start on the way. I am going to take that all the way across, actually. And I think I like that. Okay. So I still have quite a bit of wet black paint on here and I'm not gonna let that dry. I'm gonna clean off my brush. And here's how you clean off a brush properly. Pretend that the bottom of the jar is dirty and that your goal is to clean the bottom of the jar, not necessarily the brush. So let the brush sit on the bottom of the jar and gently swish it back and forth. Like you're trying to just wipe up whatever's down there. And that will clean off your brush quickly and without destroying it, like stabbing it. Some people will stab it and that forces the bristles apart and then your brush doesn't last as long. Okay, now I'm going to load up with white paint and I'm going to start filling in some of these areas. Now while I'm using the white paint, I can refine these black lines. I can cover up a black line that I don't like. And see how it's streaking that black paint into there? That is exactly what I wanted. That's why I left the black paint wet. Um, if I decide I don't want that one, then I can just paint over top of it. But see, you can kind of see a little bit like the pink glowing through right here and some of the yellow glowing through down there and I like that so I'm not going to take that away. If you get to a point where your black paint is dry and it's not streaking in the way you want it to anymore, just get some more black paint and go over that line again and then get your white. You can go in all kinds of different directions with your brush stroke in here. Um, sometimes after I'm done filling in a section, I'll decide that it's too dark and that I want kind of a highlighted area. So I'll just get some solid white and just kind of go over it right there. I love the way the black streaks into it and how it softens everything up. You still have the obvious sections, but with the black being heavy, it still tells your eye that they're different segments. Sometimes I feather into it and really blur that line so it really fades in rather than just a slight smear. I think it's really fun to try and, you know, mask or a mirror the movement of your lines and see how the, the black and the white work together while at the same time kind of blurring each other out and smearing each other. And I ended up covering up that one completely and that's okay. Because I decided I didn't really need it anyway. But I'm going to try to leave this one down here. And by 
by just gently feathering over the top. I feel like this area got really dark, so I'm going to add some more white, just kind of right in there. I'm going to let that be streaky. I like streaks. The directionality of the brush strokes here, I think, is, is really fun. Playing with it, you know, seeing what does it look like when the strokes in this area all go this way and then meet up with this section where they all go this way? So as you can see, acrylic paint dries really fast. Um, it's only been a few minutes, but some of these areas are dry now and it's not streaking into my white the way it was when I started. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. So that's why I kind of jump around, you know, where I where I start so that I can get some of that streaking all over the canvas rather than just on one side. I'm gonna kind of feather that out right there. And you know, I can even decide to leave one of those segments showing the background color if I decide to. That could be kind of fun. I think I'm going to fill it all in, but that's something that you can experiment with. And you know, what's really cool about this technique is you don't have to use black and white. Um, I'm showing you black and white just to kind of get you started, but you can, you can use anything. You could do white lines and fill it in with black. You can use um, primary color lines, fill it in with white, um, anything. Get really creative with it and see what you come up with. So again, I've got a little bit of that orange peeking out in there. I'm going to leave that. I want this section to be a little bit more on the, the white side. This is going to be my kind of my focal point. So I'm going to use my white pretty heavy here so that it doesn't all blend in. Trying to keep the blends right at the corners, or right at the edges. Then you can stand back and look at it. See if there's anything you want to touch up or add. The only thing I can see that I really want to add is a streak of white right Yeah, I like that. When you're done, you have to sign up. So I'm going to get a little brush and some black paint. Don't be afraid of your signature. A lot of people are afraid to sign a painting. Um, they don't want it to take away from the painting. or They don't want it to detract from it. You have to sign a painting. It's not complete unless it's signed. People expect to see your signature. So I'm going to take white and I'm going to sign it right here in white. And I don't even try and hide.